so the first group were about 40 people. And they left from two ports. One is La Rochelle in uh, Vendée, and the other is Dieppe in the north of France. Maisonneuve was leaving from the north, and another group leaving from uh, uh, La Rochelle. A few weeks, I, days or weeks, before the departure, which was set on May 8, 1641, a lady shows up. Now we've got ladies coming in. Okay. Again, I'll give a talk on this lady because she's extraordinary. She's our, our Canadian Joan of Arc. Okay. Her name is Jeanne Mans. Jeanne Mans. While this was going on with De La Dauversière and Maisonneuve and all these Jesuits, Jeanne Mans, also a young lady, she's born in uh, 12, I think, 1612, so she's 20, 20, um, 29 years old in 41. She has felt the call to go to Nouvelle France. She has been to France, to Paris. She does not know what to do. She wants to go, but she does not know what she's going to do over there until she finds a rich lady in Paris who has heard that in Quebec they founded a hospital. Madame de la Peltrie, remember her? She was a companion of Saint Marie d'Incarnation, the lady that she saw in her dream going together. Madame de, Pal de la Peltrie financed the hospital in Quebec. And so this other rich lady says, I want to do the same. So I want to finance a hospital in Montreal. Can you be in charge of the hospital? And then Jeanne Mont says, sure, that's what I'm going to do. Because she had learned to be a nurse. She had quite a background as well. So there's Jeanne Mans. <clears throat> there is Jeanne Mans, who is looking to join this team going to found the city of Ville-Marie in uh, on the island of Montreal. It is at that time, in the, when is it, spring 41, thereabout, that they chose the name Ville-Marie. It's going to be the Our Lady's city. Like Mar Maryland, in, in the US they have Maryland. Over there it's Ville-Marie, in honor of Our Lady. So Jeanne Mans will join a team uh, in La Rochelle. Maisonneuve is in, in uh, Dieppe. This is quite extraordinary when you think about it, and some historians have noticed it. A famous historian called Gustave Langteau has gone so far as to say, this is perhaps unique in history the birth of a town whose only goal was the glory of God and the conversion of the natives. It was not trade. It was not exploration. It was not whatever it was. The glory of God and the conversion of the natives. So they left in May 41. Jeanne Mans arrived earlier. She arrived about three months later. June, July, August, a guy in August, I think it was August 8, or thereabout, uh, 41. And Maisonneuve was late in arriving. He was so late, he arrived at the end of September. So they said, well, mm -hmm. this is too late, end of September. It's too late to go down to Montreal and start building the fort in the winter. It's going to be too rough. So they decided to stay in Quebec. So that winter, 41, 42, they stayed in Quebec. And by the way, we will see in another talk, that's the winter that St. Isaac Jogue was made prisoner and he was brought down to Orisville and he suffered incredibly in the cold of winters. I don't know how he survived. 
when you read this, you just don't know. Certainly, with the help of God. So, here we have our 40-ish uh, pioneers of Montreal wintering in Quebec. But there's problems in Quebec. Now, we, they're going to meet some, meet some problems. Because in Quebec, there's already people there. There's a few hundred people, and there's a governor called Montmagny. And Montmagny says... Uh, you know, why do you go to Montreal? I mean, it's infested with Indians over there, with Iroquois. You know, that's very dangerous over there. Why don't you just settle on the island of Orléans, which is nearby? And, uh, and there was great dispute, okay? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, great discussion about it. And there were these people, they're founding another city. A bit of jealousy, perhaps, of, uh, between the two. Anyway, and there's a famous sentence of, Ma of Maisonneuve. I'm sure you, you know the famous sentence. My honor is at stake, he told Montmagny. And you will agree that I must go up there to start a colony, even if all the trees of that island were to change into so many Iroquois. I have not come here to discuss. I have come here to fulfill a plan. Which is, and they knew, Maisonneuve knew about the vision of Dauversière, de la Dauversière. He knew about the voice. He knew about the whole plan. And he was all for it. Heaven wants this city. We're going to go and found this city no matter what happened. And, uh, and so in May, now we are May 42, early May 42, probably around the 9th of May, two or three boats left Quebec, went down to Montreal. And <clears throat> when they arrived, so they arrived on the part of the island, on the uh, south, uh, southeastern part of the island, and Maisonneuve must have recognized the place where de la Dauversière told him to build the fort. He said, you go there, there's be a little St. River, St. Charles River, you go there and you're going to build the fort right there. But the man was in France. And things were just materializing. Things were just happening. So when they came ashore... <coughs> Maisonneuve is the first one to step down. He knelt down. Father, de, Father Vimo knelt down second. And everybody came down. <clears throat> Again, from the different sources, according to Father Vimo, who was one of the team, he said it was on May 17, 1642. According to Dolier de Casson, who was the, one of the first historians who wrote a few years later was May 18, May 19. Anyway, let's say May 17, because Father Vimo was there. First thing they did after they got out from the ship, first thing they did, what do you do? You're arriving in 40 people. First thing they did, build an altar and have mass. The first public act was to have Holy Mass. And, and then they will have adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. Remember the company of the Blessed Sacrament? The confraternity. So all these, not all of them are members, but many of them are. And they know that their great sponsors in France are members of the confraternity of the Blessed Sacrament. And so they will have adoration. And it's probably getting a bit late in the day they don't have candles, or they're running out of candles. And, and again, that's a historical detail. What did they use to light the altar? They caught fireflies. They caught fireflies and put them in a some kind of a net, and they had them on the altar, and they were doing lights. That's a historical fact. Like, there must have been so many. It must have been so wild, okay, in Montreal. And uh, fireflies. 
they sang the Veni Creator. And Father Vimo, in his sermon, according to Dolier, he said, Look, gentlemen, what you see here is but a grain of mustard seed, but it is sown by hands so pious and so moved by the spirit of faith and piety <clears throat> that heaven must doubtless have vast designs. And I have no doubt that this seed will grow into a great tree one day to achieve wonders. So the sermon on the grain of mustard seed, that was the sermon by Father Vimo. So then they proceeded to build a, the fort and uh, to get life going. We will talk more about this when we speak about Maisonneuve and Jeanne Mars. I might put them together in another talk. Because this talk is essentially on uh, de la Dauversière. So the, the mission thing is Maisonneuve became the governor of Montreal. By the way, I forgot to say that Montmagny was with them uh, in, in that expedition, and he appointed the Maisonneuve as the governor of Ville Marie. And so the two the two centers started to develop, Quebec and Montreal. The 1640s were a difficult time because of the incursion of Iroquois coming. 1650s uh, also were difficult days. Maisonneuve had to go back to France to get a hundred soldiers to come and protect the city. And when he came back in 53, he came back with Marguerite Bourgeois. She shows up in 50, 1653, which was his greatest recruit, Marguerite Bourgeois, who will open schools across North America with it. Uh, Notre, the congregation of Notre Dame. Jeanne Mance uh, will, will be the, like the mother of the colony. With Marguerite Bourgeois, they'll be like two sisters. In 1660, we'll have the story of Dollard des Ormeaux, who will sacrifice his life to protect Ville-Marie. But then the Régiment de Carignan will arrive in 1663, and then it will defeat the Iroquois and and then finally they will be able to breathe. And later on, the Iroquois will be converted as well. So that's just a, an overview of Montreal, <clears throat> what happened then. In France, at that, during that period, from 1642 until 1659, Monsieur de la Dauversière was organizing every year new expeditions of pioneers. Uh, in various years, he would find uh, finances as well for the mission, for the, the colony. Monsieur de la Dauversière, uh, so he was the soul of, of everything. Eventually, some of his nuns, eventually they came. They did not come earlier because they had to be trained. A nun has to be trained. It's 10 years, 15 years before they can actually swarm into another community. They will get the spirit of the community. And his own daughter went to Montreal. Eventually, so he got, uh, he met the Maisonneuve. When Maisonneuve would come back to Montreal, to, to France, of course, he would go and meet de la Dauversière and to report to him. And uh, eventually, November 6, 1659, Jérôme Leroyer de la Dauversière passes away. He died very poor with great debts because he had taken on himself the, uh, the financing of Ville Marie, and also the loans that have been taken was like 30,000 uh, pounds per year, say it's 
three hundred thousand dollars per year, roughly. I don't know in today's money. And so when he died, there was a. I mean, his family went bankrupt. His son became bankrupt, and also some of the convents that he had founded had to take part of the the bankruptcy. Nevertheless, they still considered him as their founder. And uh, so that is this man who had the inspiration from heaven to found Montreal. When you look at it, when you look at the whole history of Canada, it's it's really a, a private project. The king is not involved in this. The king was involved, if you remember, Henri de Lévy de Ventadour, he was the viceroy, and he was taking care of Quebec. But nobody was taking care of Ville-Marie. It was a private tax collector in a small town of France who was doing it all by himself with his friends, finding uh, benefactors for the project, promising what? Uh, promising disaster, okay? You're putting your money over there, we can guarantee nothing. You get a crown in heaven, that's all I can promise you, okay? And uh, and also you might, those who go there trying to recruit people to go to New France, which was uh, pretty hard, especially mothers, would you let your daughters go to, you know, <coughs> to Red China to start a, a hospital, you know? <laughs> And so, and mothers would pull their daughters' bags. You're not going over there. Okay. Jeanne Mans and Marguerite Bourgeois also were involved in the famous uh, Les Filles du Roi, the daughters of the king. These orphan girls who were sent to Ville-Marie, also to Quebec, to, to marry these men, because it was essentially men over there. They wanted to start families. That's where Marguerite Bourgeois became very, very influential because she knew all the men. <coughs> And at least the first time she traveled with like these 30 girls, so she got to know the girls. So when it got to Montreal, she says, okay, you, I think you, you'd be good with him. And, and she started matchmaking everybody, you know. And so all the first families in Montreal were arranged by saints. You know, so Marguerite Bourgeois, I mean, Jeanne Mans, Maisonneuve, they're, they're great, great people, really. So, the logistics, the finances, the recruiting, all this was done by this man, de la Dauversière. Without the help of the king, without the help of the Jesuits, they were giving spiritual help, guidance, but they were not financing it. So he's really, you know, he's really the founder of Montreal, the soul of this foundation. So, we will, uh, I will try to put together a bit, some, some pictures, a bit of a slideshow to about, on, on Ville-Marie, and you will see his name comes up, as, uh, especially when in uh, December 1640, you remember Jean de Lauzon, the, the association of the 100, sorry, the company of the 100 associates, donate Montreal to two men. So, and one of them is de la Dauversière. He's the main man. The other is just backing him up, uh, le baron de Francois. So, these are some of these hidden heroes uh, to whom we owe so much. And that little grain of mustard seed has become a tree out of Montreal. God alone knows how many religious congregations swarm from all over North America. I mean, the Grey Nuns, the Grey Nuns, the Congregation Notre Dame, just these two. And you have a number of them, uh, a number of these congregations had their mother houses in Montreal. And from there, they went all over the world. When the, the, uh, the, uh, the OMI fathers, the Bishop of Monseigneur uh, Provence of St. Boniface in Manitoba, he says, I need nuns for my the children of the Indians. He came to Montreal to talk to the mother superior of the uh, gray nuns. I need nuns. So they came from Montreal, they went west, part of, they went north as well. So Montreal has really become a tree, a source of vocation. And now 
The tragedy is, it's the end. I may have told you that I, I know one young lady, she's on the South, the south Bank, but uh, she visited about 10 convents in Montreal to join. Can I join? All 10 said, we don't take vocations anymore. They refuse vocation. Not only they don't want, but they refuse those who show up. And this lady said to one of the mothers, she said, but mother, don't you want to start a traditional branch? You will have fruits. And the mother said, well, if there were three or four of you, perhaps. She came back a week later with three friends. Can we start a traditional branch? And the mother said, no, we're, we're not. We're not starting it. We haven't had vocations for 30, 34 years, 35 years. And if you come in, you'll be taking care of dying nuns and uh, taking care of wills and all the paperwork. And No, that's not life for a young lady. Forget it. And, and I have an email from one of these communities. She's not from Montreal. She's from Lac Saint-Jean. But uh, she says, no, now we are living the last chapter of our congregation. A priest told me uh, last month that within 10 years, the next 10 years, he said America, but I, I think we can say North America, out of 400 religious congregations in the next 10 years, over 300 will disappear. Not houses, congregations. You know, and so, so that is important, you know, to, to see what's happening today, knowing what happened in the, the, the foundation, okay, what has changed the course of history, it goes back to what we lived, what we has no, have known as la révolution tranquille, you know, and uh, the quiet revolution, and that's 1960s, that's Vatican II, that's the mass. And that's where not only they have, they're not producing fruit, they're dying. And uh, so we need to uh, go back to the root of the problem and also the solution of the problem. And the solution is to go back to our, to our own roots, je me souviens, to go back to our, our, our found, founders and to the spirit, the spirit of conversion. That's the spirit they had. And... Uh, Pray to them, because uh, as we saw, <clears throat> and we will see when we speak about François de Laval, Monseigneur de Laval, devotion to the Holy Family is something very, very Canadian as well. But it comes from them. De la Dauversière, first in Montreal, Monseigneur de Laval in Quebec. They'll be the one who will be spreading these, uh, these devotion. And the families in Montreal all these daughters of the king and all these, these settlers in Montreal had as average 12 kids each. So that's how the Montreal grew pretty fast. Okay, Within uh, a few generations, the island had a few thousand people. So, But they had principles. They had a spiritual life. It was really a Catholic village at the beginning. So read about these great people and we'll continue next time. Thank you very much.